part of what we speak to in this channel is uh, just understanding that uh, it's not about organics. It's not about, um, you know, the, the latest superfoods that really determined you know, your, your place in, in health and wellness, okay? What we speak to here is just understanding that everything is part of a moderation of your lifestyle, your thought processes, okay, and your nutrition. Nutrition is just one part of it, okay? So we just recently moved out to uh, a place called Kalani, which is a uh, rural Queensland town. And we made that decision because we wanted to get back to a smaller community. If you were gonna to speak to uh, the need for you to become responsible for how you find your foods or even to understand where your foods come from, well, that dictates maybe you should start growing some, obviously, if the conditions are there for you. But that's the option, okay? So we could still be where we were but and you know buy stuff in. It was our intention though, that the lifestyle that comes with being able to grow your own, to be on the land, to be in touch with stuff is more important than um, you know just having enough financial means to go and buy it and there become dislocated from it. I took a really rough front patch and, and like what I've tried to do here is like these I've just sort of put some strawberries in, you know, that's the, the cos lettuce in there now, the English spinach some good old kale you know and as you can see what I'm doing is I'm just claiming the garden as a go you know it was here and um, uh, instead of which is what actually um, it's what a lot of uh, new uh, gardeners tend to do they just get this big um, uh, you know big garden and they uh, they decide that they're going to um, you know sort of try and plant uh, you know a hectare of uh, veggies and they get into trouble you know but the a real good way of doing it is to you know just to uh you know get your uh, uh get started get a few in get a few back you know and just keep an eye on what it costs I me mean, the time's nothing but you still got to remember you got to put money into it you know so um the moment yeah you, you know i mean it's uh, you know, you still I've still spent you know 50 or 60 bucks on on bits and pieces, you know. But you will get that back after a while. But you know, it's not always that. Um, uh, you know, sometimes you just got to buy a few things. It's all good. All right. I, I've been now, you know, uh, a a vegan for the last part, better part of a decade. For the first part of that decade, five years and a decade, I was actually a raw foodist. Okay, in the pure sense of the word, that's all I would have is raw foods. Now, when I'm saying this is why I was a raw foodist, okay, because I actually, you know, drank the Kool-Aid, so to speak, of uh, other people out there that uh, were spruiking the, the raw foods. Now, the interesting thing about this is that over those years, I've seen all of them, every single one of them drop off, okay? And... I'm not going to say that there's nothing wrong with, or there's something wrong with the raw food. So I, I, I totally agree with it, for especially for the sense of getting well. If you're coming back from a major illness of some sort, can't can't go wrong with it. Okay, I really believe in it. Now, for those people that are still on a raw food diet, okay, and you know just want that to happen for their lives and be comfortable with it, hey. If you're in an area that you can go and get your fruits, nuts, seeds, whatever, without having to f ship them, you know, from the other side of the world, and you consider yourself to be um, ecologically, uh, or sorry, environmentally correct in your, your uh, food choices, great. No arguments. I don't want dogma. It's been almost three weeks now and uh, I've been uh, gradually working through the garden bit by bit, you know, and uh, it's finally starting to take shape. You know, we had our first um, first crop of greens. Uh, as you can see, they're still they're going really good there, you know. Um, so, yeah, you know, we've uh, I've gone on now to my second tier of planting. Uh, 
more, as you might see, there's lots of kale involved there, you know, so <laughs> we're great believers in greens, you know. But, um, you know, I've set up my uh, little trellis with peas and tomatoes coming up in there, and uh, that's the way I sort of claim each bit, you know, as you can see, as I'm going through, I'm... I'm taking out the old stuff, like I just leave it to, you can see that mound there, you know, like that, that wasn't all of it, it was even more than that, you know, but, uh, you know, I just keep uh, shoveling up as a bit of uh, um, debris to use at the end, you know, but, uh, you know, eventually, you know, this whole place will be finished here, and I'll start on the next side, around the, around the side, you know, so, so there we go, we're, um, we're three weeks in, we've taken our first crop, and, uh, it's beautiful, Clarny, beautiful little spot. So anytime you're really trying to work out, you know, what's the best diet for you, don't look at it as a diet. Yeah, sure, if you've got to lose weight, if you've got to get healthy, then make a lifestyle change. This is what we speak to, okay? It's not fad diets, okay? What you need, right, is a lifestyle change. Everything comes from that point of view. If you're trying to diet something, it's not gonna work, it'll slip away. Everything has to be in place, okay? Otherwise, you're just hopping on some express train that's just gonna drop you off out in the middle of nowhere and it's a long way home. <laughs> hey guys, just wanted to add a couple of things about the uh, about the gardening. You know, I'm really excited to be able to, you know, get a garden happen again, again after, uh, it's quite a few years now since I've been able to grow a good garden, you know, but um, for me, it's a love. I love my gardening, you know, and um, I love seeing things grow and uh, I love being part of uh, what is, you know, getting your hands dirty and everything, you know, so uh, it encourages all, you know, to, to, um, to even get a pot going, you know, and get the kids into it, you know, uh, just get them to know actually where food comes from. And unfortunately, that's what's missing today, you know, like uh, uh, majority of kids just think, you know, you know, milk comes out of a plastic bag and, and or a plastic carton and uh, doesn't know any of the uh, story behind, uh, you know, where milk comes from or et cetera, you know, so um, same as the food line, you know, you can, you can choose to uh, be part of a consumer network and uh, keep throwing shit away and, and uh, getting someone else to serve you up a tucker or uh, you know you make choices at the end of the day you know the planet pays you know <laughs> it's, it's so much stuff that uh, you know we're producing now it's way beyond way be below cost and uh, and it's getting subsidized um, it's, it's one of those things that uh, one of those cleverly crafted secrets I don't know. I get tired of, of listening to uh, some of the, of the rubbish that gets put out there when we speak to the, um, you know, vegan movement. There's so much in division, there's so, so much division and, you know, whether this low fat, low carb, high carb, high fat diet makes, you know, is the optimal Again, optimal. Is this someone really fucking knows? How do they know? You know? What but what comes out of this is that for a diet to work, it has to be balanced. Okay? So when we speak to a diet, we extrapolate it out into a lifestyle okay it's not one component the reductionist element that is in today's western society really wants us to you know break it up into little pieces where it doesn't it's a holistic method of living okay what you've got nutrition you've got exercise you've got mindfulness that's the trilogy that we particularly work on and if you manage to get that all in harmony you get a balanced lifestyle so that's an argument that we can have uh, many times over with how much 
calories, how much you know macronutrients, how much micronutrients, you know what is raw food against you know cooked food, you know is it death? God Almighty, you know like I've just seen so much crap out there now. Oh my God! <laughs> Oh God, it's wet. Oh. Oh. oh, look, they're just absolutely devastated. Oh, shit. Oh, my garden. Destroyed. Oh, how sad is that? How sad is that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, well. Let's see uh, the way it goes. Oh. For the better part of a decade now, I have been, uh, you know, just on a plant-based diet, and I'm I'm not so concerned about high fat, low fat because we're all individuals. This is one thing that I have noted is that we're all individuals. Duh. But that's what's happens. Okay, within the. Uh, the, the striving to find this better, this optimal diet, okay? What gets in the way is dogma, which becomes ego, etc., etc. And with the ability for you <laughs> to make choices based on something that really is quite intrinsic in us, that at the end of the day, you are responsible for your life. There's no point in just saying, oh, I can't do this because my job doesn't let me, my family doesn't let me. And we hear this all the time. And it's a cop out. You either make the decision or don't make the decision. I hear plenty of people come to me and say, I couldn't do what you do. Why? Or what are you missing out? No, it really means they've got, they have to make a decision. You have to take responsibility. This is where it comes to the rubber meeting the road, as they say, is that it's your responsibility. You can't um, farm off your life to someone else. Hope you found that interesting. If you did like the material, please like, comment or subscribe. That would be great.